Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Well, if you read the title of the video, then you know it has nothing to do with these three case knives there. It has everything to do with this one here, which is the Case Stagbone Medium Toothpick. Uh, the reason I have these three out here is because, uh, well, that's all of my other case toothpicks. I have one of each size. Uh, like I mentioned, the Stagbone is a medium toothpick. So it's the same size as the uh, one I have here in Peach Seed Jig Bone. This is the first uh, toothpick I picked up by Case. I think I reviewed this one. I might not have. Um, the other um, Case toothpick, this is the second one I picked up. This is the small one. And this is uh, in the Carhartt lineup, which is a pretty cool knife. I don't think I reviewed that one, so I will have to talk about that one in the near future. And then uh, the Case Large Toothpick. Uh, I know I reviewed this one, and it's pretty cool. This one is um, five and a half inches long. Medium Case Toothpicks are four and a quarter inches long. And the small Texas Toothpicks are three inches long. So they go up by an inch and a quarter with each side. So three inches, four and a quarter inches, and then five and a half inches overall in the, well, five and a half inches in the closed position. With that said, I'm gonna move these over to the side. I just wanted to show you the size comparisons. Let's get on to the Case Stagbone Medium Texas Toothpick. And I'm gonna start by looking at the box in here. Um, you see there, that's the number for it, the 65328. But you notice it's got the number 6.5 Bone Stag Medium Texas Toothpick. And then the overall number is 6.510094 SS, SS for stainless steel or the case True Sharp Steel. And you see this has uh, got a born date of February 25th, uh, 2022. What I want to talk about first is this beginning number on here, which is 6.510094. Now, typically a case uh, pattern number is only like four digits long, uh, but for some reason, the toothpicks have a double zero in the middle. Um, and then usually it'll be like uh, two numbers in front and then the two numbers behind. The actual pattern number for the uh, medium toothpick is a 0094. The one stands for it having one blade. And in this case, it has 6.5 in the front. And what 6.5 stands for is bone stag. Um, what 6 normally stands for on a uh, case uh, knife is for stag. And what the 5 stands for is... Um, a jigged material, normally bone, so it's like jigged bone will be a five, but also jigged Delrin, jigged synthetics, and jigged wood will also have a five. But if the number is 6.5, it'll usually say bone stag after it, and it will be a knife made of bone with the um, uh, bone jigged to look like stag. That's what the 6.5 stands for. Uh, as far as I know, that's the only way they use the 6.5. Now what I plan on doing is first reviewing this knife. And then after that, I want to actually talk more about the handle material on there. Uh, and the main reason is because um, someone had asked me a while back, almost over a year ago, what did I think of uh, the case Bone Stag? And I said, well, I don't have any, so I really can't give you an honest opinion. But I'm not crazy about the way it looks in pictures. Um, well, my opinion has changed now that I have it in person in front of me. So let's get a hold of this knife and start chit-chatting about my Case Bone Stag toothpick. And why wouldn't I pick up a toothpick? Now, normally the size toothpick I like to get are the ones that are five inches or over, you know, the large toothpicks. Um, but um, a spokesperson from Case has said that 
they will not be making any more large toothpicks. Um, so really, this is the largest toothpick that Case is making, at least in the foreseeable future. I've never accepted the word never as meaning ultimately we'll never do it again. I've always took it as meaning that they have no plans on doing it again. Um, the toothpick is not a pattern that falls into the uh, case vault. Um, what it is is a knife that they just don't make a lot of. So they do seem to make one or two a year. Um, and um, this year they happen to do a bone stag and uh, well, if you're looking at it, uh, I tell you what, it looks pretty dang good. And I, I also will tell you here, if you're looking at the back here, you see that line there where people will say it's gapping? Uh, do I have something to point with? Oh, of course I have something to point with. Let's open up the little car heart here and we'll use the tip of that. And let's see if we can get that. See it right there? The line right there going there. Uh, which is the gapping. Well, I've held that up to, to light and you can barely see any light escaping through there. So is there a gap? It's very, very uh, slight between the, um, the back spring and the brass liners. Very, very slight. Uh, there is no gap at all between the bone handle. Yes, it's a bone handle and uh, everything else, and including... Uh, going into the nickel silver bolsters. It's nice and smooth. Pins are nice and smooth. The um, the pin for the back spring uh, is actually in, is dented into it. So it is recessed into the uh, bone. So it is also not protruding out. So it's very nicely done. Um, and the blade, if you can see there, is fairly well centered. I guess it's a little bit to the back side, but not by much. And um, I know people are going to say, well, the um, the um, the pull on the blade is fairly light, but that is the case with these slender designed uh, toothpicks. Um, and the reason for that is it is a very slender design. You have a very slim blade. And you also have a somewhat slim back spring because, well, you got a thin frame. You can't have the largest back spring in the world, so you're not going to have a whole lot of pull on this thing. I would say the pull is around four or five. Some people might say three or four, but I'm saying four or five on this. Um, on the big one, the pull is about a six. So, and on this one... Yeah, about the same thing, around a four or five. Uh, so that's where you're going to have with your pull on this. So if you're looking for a knife without a very strong pull, uh, this toothpick is going to work out really well for you. You notice you got that long, uh, whatever you want to call it, Turkish clip, California clip, uh, muskrat blade. I think that's what um, Case refers to it as, is that muskrat blade because it's very similar to the blade that they use in their muskrat knives. Um, the length of the blade overall is right at um, three and a half inches or so, a little less than three and a half inches. And the uh, cutting edge on it is three and an eighth inches long. So if you're looking at something for, uh, for uh, the United Kingdom, this is just barely over being legal, you would have to basically nip the end of the blade in order to get it under. You'd have to take off at least an eighth of an inch of the blade, which would just ruin the whole knife as far as I'm concerned. Um, but as you can see, I think they do a really, really good job uh, with torching the bone and also making it look like stag. And the reason I'm saying that is, well, here is a case knife in genuine stag. And there you have it. Pretty dang close. The back side on this is better matched than on this knife. So that's something else that you can uh, look forward to on the, uh, on the bone stag knives versus the genuine stag knives is you're going to have uh, the front and back matching actually better than you do with just a stag knife. 
Here's a, another stag knife from a Rough Rider. And you can see the difference there. And finally, um, I have another toothpick and stag, and this one is by Great Eastern. And you can see, I gotta tell you, I think the bone stag looks better than the genuine stag from Great Eastern. Um, the Great Eastern um, toothpick is only four inches long uh, versus the four and a quarter inches long. So it's a smaller knife. Um, and uh, it's also a much chunkier knife, if you notice the two. Notice uh, the way they are. And quite frankly, the way I, I think about this is, is this is your standard toothpick. And this is basically like a sow belly toothpick. And the reason I say that is, well, here is a Rough Rider sow belly. And notice the uh, top portion of the handle. Look at that. Can you see that, the shape of it? The difference is the back end. So instead of having a, uh, a the, the serpentine end back here, you end up with a, uh, a powder horn end on a sow belly. And the blade, ends up being a little longer, but still pretty much a very long clip on it. And actually you will find sow bellies that have this exact style of a uh, long uh, Skinner blade on it. So when you think about it, this is kind of like the sow belly toothpick and this is a standard toothpick in the medium frame, um, four inches long. Uh, this is the Great Eastern. It's going to cost, well, now now that it's out of production, it's going to cost you three or four times what you're paying for on the um, on the case uh, stag bone toothpick. This comes in right around $60. These were $120 new. So it was a lot more money on these uh, when they were first coming out. Um, I like both of them, but uh, for uh, just graceful lines and everything, uh, this uh, this one definitely looks a whole lot better. I know a lot of people are going to say this blade is not nearly as functional as what you have on the uh, the Northfield or the Great Eastern toothpicks, and I would agree with that for most functions. Um, but you have to remember the uh, the purpose of the toothpick to begin with was basically a folding bird and trout knife. So. Um, you're not talking about having to deal with um, uh, chopping into wood or whittling or anything like that. You're talking about um, using this knife for skinning uh, animals and uh, for fine detail in skinning also. So like uh, doing the caping work of like removing the fur off of an animal um, around the uh, eyes and ears and stuff like that or around the antlers. Uh, and with a blade like that, it's going to be a little easier to get in there and do the fine detail work. And this will also work fairly well for a, a steak knife, too. So when you're looking at it for that purpose, then uh, the, uh, the value of a heavier, uh, thicker blade is not as important. This one, you're definitely going to be able to do more whittling with and do a little more woodcrafting with than you will with the um, with the case toothpick but like I said it's uh you can say the same thing with the um, a, a sow belly stockman versus a regular stockman this will do more heavy duty work and so um, same thing here this sow belly style toothpick uh, it will be more robust and handle heavier chores than the medium toothpick by case um, that's just a fact of life. Um, and there's nothing I can say to change that. I got to tell you that too. But the thing is, is as a collector of toothpicks and the way I just really enjoy that long slender look and the, the general style of the, uh, that long, uh, Turkish blade or long California clip that you have on the uh, case toothpicks. Uh, I gotta tell you, um, these will win every time with me. 
Um, I'm not out there trying to do woodcraft with it or anything else. And I really do like uh, just the general lines of these knives. And they're really good at slicing and dicing. And uh, that's really uh, the main purpose that I use it for. I'm not cutting wood with it. I'm usually cutting meat with it or other things. But don't let it fool you. I've also cut up carpet with these kind of knives and had no problem doing it. So it will handle a tough chore, but that's not really what it's designed for. So, you know, if you want to create a bunch of blade wobble, then you start using it for really heavy chores and everything. But for me, for the light duties that I end up doing and everything else, um, you can't go wrong with a medium toothpick. So, I usually carry a large, but uh, this one uh, is deserving of some time in the pocket. And it's going to look really good, because I, I tell you what, that bone looks good. Or that stag bone looks good, or bone stag looks good. Like I said, it compares well to other um, stag. Um, you know, while I'm at it, let's compare it to some stag bone or bone stag that other companies make and uh here's a, a rough rider and bone stag this is the same uh stag bone bone stag i don't remember what they call it. i think they call it a stag bone um this is the same one that is used in um by marbles and one of the things you notice in it right away is you see all those lines in there you don't see those lines in here this looks like actual material you can tell that this was jigged on a machine and those lines kind of detract from uh from authenticity of it being actual stag um and at first i thought the coloring on these were pretty good but now i think it's a little bit too brown and uh it doesn't look quite as realistic as it should compared to real stag even um, this stag you can see the difference um, here is another this is a frost uh, bone stag or stag bone I think this one's actually whitetail cutlery on a little toothpick and it also doesn't compare very well to this bone stag or a stag bone bone stag I'm gonna have to get it straightened out Anyway, uh, you can see this one looks a lot more like real stag compared to either one of those. And uh, even when you're looking at it with real stag, it kind of looks more like real stag. So I'm pretty impressed with it. I really like the way they did it. I think they did a great job with it. And... Uh, it's a pretty cool knife. I'm glad I picked up um, the uh, Bone Stag uh, toothpick, and I'm looking at picking up a few more uh, medium toothpicks by case. So far, I've got two in the medium lineup, and both of them are well made, um, good lines, and they just the fit and finish are great. So, uh, as long as you're all right with a a pull of about four on the main blade, I think you'll be happy with these especially if this is a pattern you like. Anyway, stick around for some slides.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.